We are joined this morning by Rebecca Lee Smith, Associate Professor of Epidemiology. Dr. Smith, can you hear us okay? Yes, I can. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for joining us. Will you give us the, um, the, the basics on what we need to know about this new sampling with regard to ticks and the different kinds of ticks that have been found here in Illinois? And I understand they vary a little bit across the, uh, uh, the different counties and regions of Illinois, correct? That is correct. So we actually, we have four vector ticks in Illinois. Uh, vector ticks are what we call the ticks that can carry diseases. There isn't enough information about Gulf Coast ticks because they're very newly discovered in Illinois. But uh, up in the northern area, we have clusters of the black-legged ticks. Those are the ones that spread Lyme disease. Down in southern Illinois, we have clusters of the Lone Star ticks. Those are the ones that give you alpha-gal, which is that mammalian meat allergy. And then in the center, we have a little bit of Lone Star, a little bit of black-legged, and also the American dog tick, which carries the most deadly of the tick-borne diseases, which is the rickettsiosis. So they have multiple diseases, and they're all throughout the state, but we have different clusters of different ticks in different places. Wait, 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 wait. The last one you just mentioned. I have never heard of that before. A dog tick? Tell me what this, the recovery. And that's deadly for dogs or humans? Uh, it's deadly for humans and for dogs. Okay. So oh, what does it do? Luckily, it's pretty rare. What does that it, disease do? So rickettsiosis, it's actually, it's a bacterial disease, but it's a very fast moving one. So, you know, if you don't catch Lyme early, you can have these chronic diseases. If you don't catch rickettsiosis early, it can be sepsis. So oh, it can lead to gosh. very, no. very quick death. And when you said it's very rare, how rare are we talking about? <clears throat> uh, luckily, we haven't had a lot of cases in Illinois. It does happen in Illinois. We have had deaths due to it, but Thankfully, not a ton in Illinois, uh, much more Lyme disease and much more of the alpha-gal as far as we know, although it's not reportable, so we don't have great data on that. So if someone gets bit by a tick and they see the tick, are there certain ones out of the few that you just listed that they should keep and in any circumstance bring it into the doctor? Because I know sometimes they say, well, keep the tick and if you have a reaction, bring it in. But are there, is there a way to identify the more serious ticks that could be causing issues that no matter what, if you get that tick on you and it bites you, you've got to go to the ER? Actually, no, because when a tick bites you, it takes 24 to 48 hours to actually transmit most diseases. So as long as you get it off really quickly, no which way. is why we say do, the, do your tick checks, yeah. find the ticks as quickly wow. as possible because wow. they can't transmit the diseases if you find them before they bite or if they've just started to bite. But yes, if you find them, do remove them safely uh, and save them to show your doctor so if you have symptoms, they can narrow down to which diseases are most likely it might change how they treat the disease. Oh. Did you see it say for the one variety that it actually gives you an allergy? To me. Yes, the Lone Star Tick can give you alpha-gal syndrome, which is an allergy to mammalian meat. So not just red meat, but also pork. Uh, and you end up having this uh, late delayed allergic reaction that if you're exposed to meat, uh, three to four hours later, you can have anything from a stomach ache to full anaphylactic shock. Wow. Isn't that wild? That is. So it like actually implants a meat allergy to the victim or the recipient. It, it's, it's saliva. So the saliva, because it bit a mammal before it bites you, it has the mammalian sugars in its saliva and its saliva makes you allergic. Oh, because your body's probably trying to attack the saliva and then those proteins are in there. Interesting. Okay. So our, one of our colleagues, Delaney, it's unbelievable. Everyone behind the camera is one, one lives with Lyme and one uh, alpha-gal syndrome. D Delaney, oh. So this is the, how common is this? We don't know. Uh, Alpha-gal syndrome isn't reportable, so we know that it's a growing problem. We've heard reports about it, but nobody's really done the data collection to find out how much it is out there and where it's really a problem. But I will tell you that the ticks that are most commonly associated with it 
are really common down in southern Illinois. Southern Illinois. So down in the Shawnee National Forest, you mm. really need to be aware of that. I just have to ask, oh, wow. Delaney, how old were you and when you when you contracted it, and do you avoid meat to this day? Uh, 23, and yeah, so can't get Okay, 23. No she contracted it at age 23. Way. Oh, and then she's had to goodness. avoid meat ever since. Okay, oh, so talking wow. about finding these ticks and getting reports, how do you guys gather this data? Do you have to visit doctor's offices? Do you re uh, rely on people who find these ticks to report back? So we, for this study, we collected data from a lot of different uh, websites and other pers uh, data collection units. So we used our natural history survey. The Illinois Natural History Survey has a an insect collection. Walter Reed has a uh, insect collection. We used iNaturalist. So any of those places that people report finding ticks, we took all of that data in to look at where people have reported ticks. We have in the past gone out to look for ticks, uh, but there's a limit to how far across the state we can get mm -hmm. just with our labs. So we try to pull in information from as many places as possible. Will you put the current data in context with previous decades? You know, when I was, when I was a kid, 80s and 90s, it was something that we were aware of. You know, I remember hearing about deer ticks and Lyme disease and to check for ticks and everything. It's always been kind of in the back of our, my mind, but has, have, has the prevalence of these disease-carrying ticks uh, increased here in Illinois specifically over the years? We think so. We don't have great data from early on. Uh, of course, with ticks, you have to go looking for them. So if we don't have the data, we don't know. But it seems like they are moving. Uh, the ticks that carry Lyme disease, the black-legged ticks, seem to be moving down from the north to the south. And the uh, Lone Star ticks are moving up from the south to the north. Uh, the, and the American dog ticks are everywhere. We have them all across the state, and they've been there for a while. Okay, so you say American dog ticks, and this is going to sound like a silly question, but when our dogs are outside and they do get a tick, it's not necessarily the American dog tick. It could be any kind, right? Or do they only take the American dog ticks? No, uh, all of these ticks that I'm talking about, they affect dogs, they affect cats, okay. they can affect horses and cows, as well as people. Wow, like. okay. Um, so how um, should we kind of handle this information? It's, it's easy to just kind of like want to stay inside or stay fully clothed and covered up at all times. Will you uh, talk some sense into us on this issue and kind of uh, common sense approach here? Yeah, so common sense approach, we want to be careful, be aware when you're going into tick habitat. So anything with long grass at the edge of woods, be aware that there might be ticks there. If you're gonna spend a lot of time there, you might wanna tuck your pants into your socks. You might want to use permethrin, which is something you can use to treat your clothing so your clothing will repel ticks. Mm. You definitely want to use your tick repellent on your skin. So there's a number of different products, sprays and lotions that are uh, EPA approved that you can use to protect yourself. And then after that, you really want to go through and do your tick checks when you come in or regularly when you've been out. Uh, the CDC recommends taking a shower. It's the best way to look for ticks on your body is if you take a shower when you come inside, you can wash off all of the, the tick repellent and also do a quick check. The ticks love to hide in your crevices. So you gotta check your belly button, you gotta check your groin, you gotta check your armpit along the edge of your hair any of those places that are kind of dark and quiet. So I'm assuming that they're gonna be an issue until the first freeze. Are they more active now, oh, yeah. this time of year, or are they more active early in the season for breeding purposes or whatnot? So we really worry about spring and fall because that's when the nymphs are most active. So the nymphs are kind of like the tick teenagers. So they've had time to get infected, but they're still really small. So they're still the size of a poppy seed. So they're very hard to find. So that's what the ones we're most worried about. The adults are a bit larger and easier to find. They're more active in the middle of the summer, but we will see tick activity year round in Illinois. And I do know that tick-borne disease has been diagnosed in Illinois in every single month of the year. So mm. we do see it, if it's above freezing, the ticks can come out. Oh no, wow. so throw in the ground or something in the Oof. winter time and then they Oof, come out. Sorry.
In the winter, they like to burrow into the leaf litter, and if it's above freezing, they'll wake up and come out and look for a meal. Disgusting.